Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new collection update here on Vital Vinyl Vlog. I have to thank Curtis, Liz, Aaron, and Aaron. Yeah, <laughs> two Aarons get thanked, which is fucking cool. But, uh, whoa, is all I gotta say at first here. Like, holy shit. And also, I need to thank John Randall, one of the channel's oldest supporters. He's been around for a while. Sick fucking guy. Because of him, we are blasting the new Windigang. But we're gonna get to this in a couple minutes. But this is the Dark Descent USA cassette. It sounds fan-fucking-tastic. I've already played it three times. It's good. But... I have a couple records to go over, and a cassette, so sit back and let's do this. First up, this is a kind of weird one. I haven't listened to this band since Carving Out the Eyes of God. I'd much rather listen to Paralysis and Soylent Green, but still Goat Whore. They're one of those bands, if I'm in the mood for it, you know, it's very nostalgic. But the name of this release is Constriction Rage of the Merciless. I haven't listened to it yet or anything, so I don't really know. But it is, uh, well, I know it's limited to like 300 copies, I think. And this is number 279. Like, the cosmetics are gorgeous and stuff, like, really sick artwork, too. It's just, you know, I, I like early, and I hate being that guy, but, like, before they started going to Mana Studios, I, I like that era of Goat Whore. Uh, it's like something of a dying son. That album, like, didn't leave my CD player for a long time. This is... I, this feels 180 gram. This is heavy duty shit. Some of you could probably look at that and tell. I, I don't really know, but really fucking nice cosmetics here. Goat whore, constriction, rage of the merciless on Metal Blade Records. Sammy's got riffs, Ben's got awesome vocals, just Goat Whore is one of those bands, I, you know, they make some good tunes, it's just, it's not really my cup of tea, like, part of me likes it, and the other part's like, why not just listen to Blank, and, you know, getting into paralysis over the past couple years, it's like, dude, Back in 1992, Ben, you already, like, made a classic. So, you have tons of classics under your belt, like, fucking, from Patrons of the Dead, Patrons of the Dead, whatever, to fucking Pussy Soul, to Carving Out the Eyes of God. Ben is a gnarly dude when it comes to extreme metal. And next up, also, this comes from Curtis. Ceremonial Bloodbath, The Tides of Blood on Black Vinyl. Fuck yeah, stoked to upgrade from the cassette to the LP. Vancouver, BC, Death Metal Horde, Ceremonial Bloodbath debut with their long-awaited first full-length album, birthing one of the most introverted, hallucinogenic, Cripsler and inhuman death metal atrocities to see the light all year, influenced by bands like Blasphemy, Sarcophago, Mystifier, Beherit, Archgoat, Mortician, and Deicide. The Tides of Blood it is an abhorrent and malformed slab of dark death metal torment lamenting from a place of utter wretchedness and abandon. Fuck yeah. One of my albums of the year. You can't really see because of the sun right now, but there's a command sacrifice. 
ceremonial bloodbath poster up there that came with the Tides of Blood, and it is fucking gorgeous. It's huge, and yeah. I get to actually read the lyrics. Yes, without a magnifying glass. But Sentient Ruin killed it with this one. This is one of my favorite death metal records of the year. It's so good. It has a little bit of competition, although, you know, I already did my death metal video, but I did say I was awaiting, you know, the new A Feather and Bone and the new Winda Gang, but we're just gonna lump them into a different category. But next up, my buddy Aaron. He just was like, yo, I have uh, some LPs I don't listen to anymore. Like, do you want them? I was like, sure. And the first LP I opened, I was like, dude, like, are you serious? Like, you really want to get rid of this? And he was like, I don't really listen to it. Oh, fuck. Nauseam. Inhale, exhale. Oh, I haven't had a copy of this in well over a decade. Oh, fucking one of the best Relapse releases ever. This is Relapse when they were pretty much one of the only labels that were actually really making moves with Grind and Nauseam were like right next to Pig Destroyer when it came to that lineup of Relapse at that time period. Without that Tsunami, who knows like what would have became with Nauseam and just Grind in general. This is 38 tracks of just fucking awesomeness. If you never heard this, if you know, if you don't know the story behind Nauseam, it's tragic. It's a fucking bummer. Like, I always butcher uh, Masuko's name, and I'm sorry if I fucked it up. But Masuko was, you know, the vocalist, plays guitars and bass on this record, and. Dude, he was like, you know, the Scandinavian grind father, like the dude, you know. Along with like Rotten Sound, to me, you know, these are the best fucking uh, Scandinavian grind bands. But right now, it sounds like my tape's getting eaten. Fuck. That's not good. Alright, that sucked. That I was kind of, when I looked at the tape, I was like, oh, why didn't they do a hard shell? But, whatever. I won't, we'll show you the LP color here, because this is fucking sick looking, seriously. Whoa. Like, my favorite Nauseam release is Shift, and after they, you know, made Shift, I felt like they were gonna bring Grind to, like, the levels of where Mastodon were. Like, it was a record that, although it was, you know, fucking savage and just awesome Grind, it felt accessible. Like, if you didn't listen to Grind, and then you had bands like Gadget, like... The, the relapse roster during this time period, it's something to look into because it's really good. It's not at all like it is now where you have a few like good bands and then you have bands that are guaranteed to sell records and then you, I don't know, it's whatever. But he also threw in Nauseam Helvet, another fucking banger right here. And another record I need to listen to more. This came out the year I graduated. What's up with this fucking tape? I'm getting pissed now. Oh, man. Alright, that sucks. 
I don't know. It was one of these. God damn it. Like, I, as soon as I looked at it, I was like, oh, man, I thought they would do a hard shell. Or, you know, something like the Extremely Rotten, like, the, like this is Demi Lich, Nespeth. Look how fucking nice that is. Oh, that sucks. Oh, dude, I'm like legit bummed right now. But, what? well, let's put something else on. Here. We'll throw, uh, and nah, that will get me a... <laughs> I'm trying not to get a fucking copyright strike. I'll probably get one for playing that. Watch. Well, we're going to put some spectral voice on. I should have put that on to begin with. But, Nalzum Helvit, just again, another classic when it comes to Scandinavian grind. And I don't like using, you know, the term classic without the K, as lame as that sounds. But, this has the K at the end. This is a killer fucking slab of grind. And again, like, rest in peace to, um, fucking Mizuto. It's so, like, it, I remember I was at my ex-girlfriend's when the tsunami hit and, like, over the past, over the next couple days, finding out about his death. It was one of the first times, like, a death and extreme music, like, bothered me, you know? It's time for Necrotic Doom. From the Necrotic Demos. Side Demo. <laughs> Side awesome, it should be called. And again, this is like just some gnarly fucking color. Very similar color to uh, Inhale, Exhale, but I doubt you're gonna get them mixed up unless somebody's playing a fucking prank on you. But Nalsum Shift, that's like just one of those records that never gets old. It, it's so fucking good. But I feel the same way about Inhale, Exhale. Like they're kind of like equal in my head. But Shift was legit like that record where it was like, whoa, these guys are doing something special and you know. There's not really many bands that sound like Nalsum. It's very hard to find a band that's like, you know, like, oh, that sounds like Nalsum. That rarely happens. But Aaron threw in some hardcore. This is Territory. And there's something pretty interesting about Territory. They're on Escapist Records. Oh, wait, it's the other hardcore band I have, but this is Territory. I don't really know much about them. I actually grabbed the wrong record. But I saw the um, now cancelled Home Records band name in here, so maybe this might have to get traded in. Pretty stereotypical hardcore tea. That wasn't the one I was talking about. I meant to grab this bad boy. Sorry. But yeah, Territory. I haven't listened to it. Technically, I mean, I guess maybe they probably sound like Sepral Torah. If the name of your band's Territory, then you have song titles like World Misery, Forever War, Blood Feud. Yeah, like, but, uh, here we go. Wasted Blood Void, another Escapist Records release, but this has Steve from 200 Stab Wounds in it. He's a young, young buck in this one. If you can find him, when you win nothing, but he's there. I thought that was cool. Like, as soon as I saw it, and I saw his name, I posted it, and he was like, holy shit. 
The cover art's fucking sick. I I, I, I kind of like this like kind of DIY like real flimsy cover. It's just cool. Void by Waste Blood. I like the I really like the cosmetics. It's like bone splatter. That's fucking rad. Again, I haven't like played this yet, but like. I, I was just like looking at it and I was like, whoa, like that's fucking sick. And it's got Steve from 200 Stab Wounds, so. He's on drums here, but still, like. I trust his taste in music, you know? We got two more LPs. We got fucking. Some invocation spells. Descent. The Black Throne on Hell's Headbangers. Got some evil fucking tunes here. Side Evil and Side Darkness. Recorded and mixed in Santiago, Ch Chile. South American Black Thrash Metal. So many good, like, black thrash bands from that area. Headsplit is, like, always on top of putting out, like, gnarly, you know, thrash bands from Chile. Yeah, this is colored, too. Well, there's Side Evil. Whoa, Side Darkness has different artwork. I've yet to really fuck with these, like, so... I do apologize, I kind of just got them like a couple days ago. Really nice cosmetics and you know, it's fucking thrash metal from Chile. Black thrash, so I'm sure it's fucking good. Next, another nice vinyl upgrade. Nuclear War Now, fucking Morbos Dead. Yes! Profana La Cruz del Nazareno. I butchered that, but fuck yeah. It's awesome having this on cassette and vinyl. I love these promo photos. They're just fucking magnificent. Goat Destroyer is just mad. Look how mad that guy is. More boats dad rules though. More bolso metal. Lado bestial. Now this is one of those releases, like, why would you want it on a colored LP? Like it's meant to be on black vinyl. Unless it's like a picture disc because the cover art's fucking magnificent. I also have the poster hanging above my window, actually. And this is just... How sick is that? The Morbos Dead, like, etching behind or whatever. I forget what that's called. Is it lamination? I, I, I don't... I really don't know off the top of my head. That's why you wear a helmet all the time, folks. <laughs> when you ride your bike or skateboard, whatever. Like, having a bigger version of this is fucking sick. Like, having this in the cassette brings a smile to my face, but having it, like, 12 inches like this, it's just fucking awesome. You gotta love, like, bestial Black Death sometimes. It's just so fun and over the top, like... But Chris Moen, Chris Moyen, whatever, he draws the best goats in the game. I, I love I love his goat work. And he also draws badass skeletons. I like when Mark Riddick draws Satan. He does some badass Satans. And that dragon he did for the uh, Azath record I thought was one of his best pieces. Now, for the new Undergang, which is the last of my collection update, which sounds like it's sadly already shit the bed. And it's obviously not my cassette deck, as you can hear. 
but I'm gonna read a little bit out of Decibel and Windigang's description of the album because I'm totally gonna butcher the title here. So, Aldrig, I live it. Google translates to never in my life, but the title translates closer to Over My Dead Body, David explains. The title is also a nod to our Duden trilogy, with Dude meaning death and live meaning life. That's kinda cool, I didn't fucking know that misanthropology was the first standalone record. But thankfully, I have a vinyl copy coming of this, but I would like to listen to it on cassette. That fucking sucked that it happened during the video, but I saved it from getting eaten, which is, you know, the most important part, but yeah, like, I just, I don't know, I was expecting, because even with Hidden History of the Human Race, I was like, oh, why didn't they use, like, the same pro tapes they used for Star Spawn, like, so fucking nice and just heavy duty but it's whatever I'm, I'm kind of bummed I'm sorry John John Randall who picked this up it's obviously not my cassette player like uh, I hope everybody's tape doesn't you know sound fucked up but yeah Aldridge I Live It by Windagong Dark Descent, MSUO, Extremely Rotten. I'm gonna hopefully try and get a replacement for this, cause that sucks. But, as always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. <gasps>